Hello everyone, my name is Eric again, and today we are going to discuss animal experimentation from a utilitarian point of view. Mumps, diphtheria, rabies, rubella, polio, measles, smallpox, tuberculosis, tetanus, pertussis, and massive amounts of other diseases and illnesses will still be a serious threat to humans today if it wasn't for the vaccination derived from conducting animal experimentation. From a utilitarian point of view, using mentally disabled humans for experimentation is as morally acceptable as using animals. To examine this, two cases are introduced in order to guide us through figuring out the ethic and molarity of animal experimentation. Case 1 is as such. Suppose fantastically that submitting 10 pigs to painful scientific experimentation would lead to a cure for most forms of cancer. Thus, the experiment that baffled 10 pigs would save thousands of human beings. Would such a scenario be morally obligatory or at least morally permissible? The happiness that thousands of human beings would receive from being cured of such a suffering-inducing disease always the pain of tame pigs will suffer. This premise is true to a utilitarian because every being's interest in avoiding pain is weighted equally. Another premise would be that we ought to do the greatest good for the greatest number which is proven with thousands of human beings' interests in avoiding pain produced by cancer to 10 pigs' interest in avoiding pain of scientific experimentation. In conclusion, we ought to submit 10 pigs to painful scientific experimentation that would lead to a cure, which would save thousands of human beings. Opponent of the argument might present such counter argument. Premise 1 The pigs have their own right to not suffer or right to live as happily as they want without interfering others. Premise 2 It is wrong to violate others' right. Conclusion It is wrong to make animals suffer even if more human can be benefited from inducing such suffering on animals. The argument is valid because the conclusion is correctly supported by the premises, but it is not sound because premise 1 is false. British philosopher Roger Scruton wrote that every legal privilege imposes a burden on the one who does not possess that privilege. Thus, since right implies responsibility and obligation and pigs do not have the mental capacity to hold the responsibility of being a moral agent, there is no need to extend the concept of right to pigs. As Carl Cohen, professor of philosophy at the University of Michigan and the University of Michigan Medical School have stated, the holders of right must have the capacity to comprehend rules of duty governing all, including themselves. In applying such rules, they must recognize possible conflicts between what is in their own interest and what is just. Only in a community of beings capable of self-restricting moral judgments can the concept of a right be correctly invoked. Therefore, as pigs have no capacity to distinguish what is morally good and bad for their own self-interest, pigs do not deserve rights. If we can agree with the argument that pigs do not have rights, then it is agreed that one is not violating others' right by making animals suffer because we ought to save thousands of humans lives 
with the cure derived from ten pigs suffering, it is morally obligatory. Now, let us consider case two as such. Now, suppose that instead of ten pigs, the scientists propose to use ten orphan human beings with severe mental disabilities. In this case, is it morally permissible? Is it morally obligatory? The argument would be similar to that of case one, in which, because the happiness it would cause to cure thousands of people's cancer, always ten orphan human beings with severe mental disabilities. <clears throat> and since we all to do the greatest amount of good for the greatest amount of people, we ought to do the experiment with those ten orphan human beings. However, such decision is only morally permissible and not morally obligatory, because in addition to the pain, ten orphans has to suffer. It will also cause shock and pain to the public, in which Many will grieve at suffering of innocent human beings. It is common for people to grieve at innocent human beings being tortured than to grieve at innocent pigs being tortured because one tend to feel closer to their own species. However, feeling does not equate ethics, as joy of murdering does not justify murdering. Therefore, opponents of the view that torturing ten humans for cure that could save thousands is okay, as torturing ten pigs for the sake of cure is okay too, would probably say that it is because humans are special from other animals. Putting religious and spiritual reasons aside. One would probably argue that, premise one, human has rationality, autonomy, and self-consciousness, while other animals have none or limited capability for those characteristics. Thus, human is special. Premise two, we should not harm human. <coughs> premise three, often human with severe mental disability is human. In conclusion. We should not harm orphan human with severe mental disability to cure cancer. The arguments are valid but unsound, as few of the premises are not solid. If rationality, autonomy, and self-consciousness are the standards of being human, then infants and those ten orphans with severe mental disability would not be considered as humans. Thus, prove premise one to be false. Also, there's no special moral reason for not harming human if harming pigs is okay. However, because not many people are aware of this counter argument, or this counter argument is not convincing enough for them, therefore the public might be more inclined to feel sadness if they fell out. That ten orphan humans are being <laughs> tortured for the cure of cancer. The sum of unhappiness the public feels plus the unhappiness of the ten orphan human beings feel might outweigh the happiness of that ten thousands of people whose cancer would be cured. Or rather, it is impossible to calculate or measure the happiness and the lack of happiness each group of people have. As a result, case two would be morally permissible, since it is not wrong to do, but hard to say that it is morally obligatory. But a hot utilitarian. My still say case two is morally obligatory as humans' interests are weighted the same as a pig's interest. And since it is established in case one that it's for the greater good 
to be morally obligated to submit to pigs to painful scientific experiments for thousands of people's cure. There is also a moral obligation to submit the ten often human beings with severe mental disability to painful scientific experiment for the same cure. <clears throat> that is to say, you would be wrong not to do case two. As a famous utilitarian and a prominent animal rights activist, Peter Singer argued against a few objections to animal equality. Among those objections are the idea that humans and animals are just plain different. It's no doubt that human and other non-human animals are different. However, the difference between human and other animals that matter to ethic is that human is capable of being a moral agent, capable of acting with reference to what's right and wrong. Because non-human animals do not have the mental capacity to make moral distinctions between right and wrong, and equality should only be established with two parties with no morally significant differences. Therefore, there's no need to consider non-human animals as human equals. Moral, moral equality in this case should be based on the same capacity to endure suffering. Opponents of the argument might ask about infants or mentally disabled humans who are also not capable of acting with reference to what is right and wrong. However, it is not practical to give a morality test to each individual human being, but rather apply it to the moral capacity of members of the species in general. Also, perhaps it is indeed wrong to treat infants and mentally disabled humans as equal to a human with personhood. And therefore, that may be the reason why um, they are not given the same rights as healthy human adults. And this concludes my presentation. Thank you.